Well, greetings, everybody, and welcome to Doerisms, the podcast, presented, as always, by our good friends at Advanced Physical Therapy. And our guest this week is Eric Stratman, the organizer of the Quincy Shootout, which is finally back after a year away. And I want to take you back one year, Eric, because I know you had a phenomenal field lined up last year. And like so many other good things in our society, COVID kind of wiped everything off the map. At any point, did you have pause about trying to do this again, not knowing what the situations and scenarios would be a year later? Yeah, I think everybody has a few um, second guesses about, you know, should we, should, or second thoughts about should we do this again? Should we try and do it again? And, um, you know, what I found out last year when we lost it, there are a lot of people that really look forward to this. And so it's... Um, it was something we felt we needed to at least try and do it one more year to make it work and see see how things would go. Um, and overall, it's been pretty good. Um, it, it has been the most, I don't wanna say the most trying year because last year was definitely trying, but things have changed quite a bit in the dynamic of high school basketball that have made things much more difficult than just getting a team here. And yet your field is still incredible this year. And you've got a who's who of kids who are committed to places like Ohio State and Michigan. And my goodness, Link Academy has like a who's who of, of people who are coming from Branson, Missouri. But you really have drawn great teams. And I think that still does speak to the word of the mouth that you are getting even a year removed from doing this thing. It, it is. And, and I, I've told a lot of coaches that have, I've talked to um, on October 1st, the, the field of teams I had coming was a, probably a top five event in the country. Um, and I think we would have been approached probably by ESPN on having some games up because they were that level. And within a month's time, things just changed uh, in a hurry. And it was, it was kids transferring. And that's the, that's the issue now of, you know, just because there's a kid that's a really good player as a sophomore at a school, you'd say, oh, it's great. Let's try and get him next year. He may not be there. And, and that's really been tough. I can imagine you also have kids who are reclassifying now to try to take better advantage of the buzz that their names have created. And, and you've done such a good job of doing this in advance. It really is a challenge. It is because, um, you know, some teams will, um, you know, like iSchool out of Texas, for example, they were probably a top five team in the country. They had two top 15 players. And in a week's time, they both left. And, and so they still want to come. Um, and so we did bring them in, but the same thing happened to Chaminade out of St. Louis, and they lost their two best players to Link. Um, and then you get coaches like, like him, um, and he, he understands, and he calls and says, look, I'm not going to be what we said we'd be. I understand if you need to replace us. And, and so uh, Coach Bennett was really good about that. You've done, you've done a great job of building relationships with these coaches, and that is reflected in what you're able to put here. Let, let's talk about what you're offering fans. And you get all kinds of different fans. You get the guys who come in and casually check out the top teams. You get guys who are, I'm going to sit in the stands all day and watch every game I possibly can. That's part of the atmosphere. I mean, those fans kind of make this event, don't they? They do. And, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a win for the diehard basketball fans. It's a win for our community. Um, because it does, it does generate interest in the community. And so, you know, Quincy is, <laughs> Quincy is only a hard sell when you have the weather like you have here and you have a team coming from Georgia or Texas, they're kind of wondering, or California, what's going on? Um, but some, some, uh, some, you know, really like the change of the weather and stuff. And I always remember the first year we had it, we had snow and the team from Las Vegas came. And I get a call a couple days later and said, after the event was over and, and the hotel said, they were a really good group of kids, but they had a snowball fight in the middle of the hotel. And I'm like, well, we'll take care of that. And so, you know, because they hadn't been used to right. seeing snow a lot. And so it's definitely been a, a good experience and, and I enjoy doing it. It's just a little stressful right now. I can only imagine because you are, we're, as we're recording this, you're right on the cusp of this. The good news is the weather is going to be cold. It's a great day for people and not any travel issues. A great day for people to, to you know, jump into a gym. You've got great food. You've got great entertainment. And it goes literally two days almost round the clock for you. Yeah. So it really is working out to be a pretty good weekend. Yeah, it has. Um, you know, we, we've ended up having to lose a couple games because we had some teams drop. 
Um, so we, we will have three games at Q&Ds on Friday starting at 530. Quincy High starts at 4 o'clock on Friday, and then we'll start at 1030 on Saturday at Quincy High and go all the way to last game tips at 9. You know the inertia of this town. When Quincy High basketball is good, everything is better. Mm -hmm. And obviously this Blue Devil team is fantastic with all this young talent that's starting to move through. For you, does that connect the dots a little better? Because I, there are people who just want to be Quincy fans, and then they come and then they get hooked. Yeah, that, that has been, a, a, I think, a big key. We have been very fortunate to have teams like Moline and Rock Island be playing on Friday at conference games. And people see what we've been able to sandwich those big games with some high profile teams and then people will be like oh my gosh you know we need to come and check that check out that team again when you pull in a sunrise christian our first year and they they walk out there with two seven footers people are going to say i want to see that so then they come again on saturday and you still have the casual fan the blue devil fan that just wants to come and watch the blue devils and we understand that but um but historically, you've given those fans great storylines, and you're doing it again this year on Saturday, bringing in Nick Kramer, which I know yep. is a game that means an awful lot to you. It does. It, it means a lot. Um, we always try and give Quincy High something that, you know, whether it was Webster Groves, it was a good matchup. The next year it was Centralia. Um, and now you bring in St. Louis U High with Nick Kramer, and, and that's Jack's son, who's the second leading all-time scorer at Quincy High. And, um you know, Jack, they were supposed to come last year as well. And it, it's just a really neat thing. I think it's going to be neat to have Jack to be able to come in and see his son play in Blue Devil Gym, but also against the Blue Devils. And, it, you know, his son, he's got two sons that are just tremendous athletes. Nick's going to go to St. Louis U to play basketball. And he's got another son that's at Mississippi playing baseball and was the Gatorade Baseball Player of the Year last year. So um, for Lafayette High School in St. Louis. So it, it does mean a lot to bring bring people back home and, and to have interesting storylines, and that's one of them. You've done a great job of that, and again, Nick can flat play. And, you know, right now, St. Louis basketball, the Billikens are to the level yep. where they are recruiting elite kids. Yep. You know, Nick Nick is a flat-out player, and that's going to be a great thing to see on Saturday. Some of the other teams, and I mentioned Link Academy, obviously, with the, what, five Division One kids there out of Branson. Yep. That, that's a big name for you, and that's, you know, that's going to be seeing Blue Bloods, future yep. Blue Blood players there. Who else really stands out in this list that you're super proud to be bringing in? For, for the most part, it's a lot of younger kids. Um, you know, St. Rita out of Chicago has got two sophomores that are just phenomenal players. The team from California, Modesto Christian, which is also a neat little story. Bryce Fantasia played basketball for Brad Hoyt over at Culver. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so he's been wanting to bring his team back. So now they're here, and they've got a, a young man that's a top 15 sophomore in the country and so um and then you have father tolton and jeremy osborne is biting off a huge chunk he's going to play link academy on friday right and then on saturday he's going to play Burkmar, both in front of quincy high um but he's got one of the porter kids um that's committed to pepperdine, pepperdine right um they got Derek chivas's son plays for them but then he also has what many think is the best freshman in the state um on his team too so um you know, he's going to have his hands full on Friday night, and he knows that. Um, but and it's nice to be able to rely on a Quincy High alum, yeah. and, and he has been incredibly good to this tournament, and it's been good bringing him back. Yes, it is, and that, that's always a lot of fun. And, and, you know, just that game alone on Friday night starts at 530, and you're going to have three or four guys that are going to be pushing seven feet tall. Um, and, and then, One of them being John Bull, who I know is a name well, that has been that, out there. Yeah, and that's on Saturday. CBC comes in, and they're going to play Modesto Christian right. now. Right. Um, and then you got John Bull. He's seven foot two, um, and a sophomore. And you know he just he's worth the price of admission because you just don't know what you're going to see out of seven two young man, and he can run the floor. And you know, but there's a lot of names that you and I were talking about that people would remember here when I said like a Derek Chivas. Right, the band you know, man. Yeah, so you've got also guys, you've got like Erwin Ir Claggett right. is coming in that's going to coach. And um, you also have um, Larry Hughes' son. Which, I again, we were just talking before, and I can't believe I'm old enough, having watched <laughs> Larry Hughes play, and he was, he was St. Louis basketball royalty, and to yeah. have his son here, uh, again, you've got great ties into St. Louis and Chicago, and that's yeah. been kind of the basis of where your success has kind of come from, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, and um, we've just not been able to get 
the Chicago, uh, some of the bigger public league schools right. down here yet. And, um, you know, I had talks this week with Chicago Curie and Simeon, both wanted to come, but because of the COVID, they just can't get the travel approved to come. Um, and so they were interested in, in coming down. And, you know, a, a, another name that people would, would recognize is going to be the coach at CBC is Justin Tatum. Right. And um, if you recognize that name, it's because his, his son is Jason Tatum. And so we've got a lot of people that are. Well, and um, Fran McCaffrey's kid is coming as well. Yeah. And, but some other names people would, would get. There are a lot, of, um, a lot of kids whose parents played at the University of Iowa. Um, there's the uh, Mo kid. Um, there's also the Cook kid from Peoria, Notre Dame. And what other fans will understand, Quincy fans, is A.C. Earl's son right. is coming from Iowa City West. And if you remember A.C. Earl, 6'11", played at Moline, and then in the NBA for a little bit. Well, his son is getting a lot of Division One interest. So there's just a lot of little neat things that we can, we can try and, and pull off. And, you know, it'd be, I think it'll be neat to see A.C. Earl maybe walking – the hallways a little bit uh, at Blue Devil Gym again as a, as a fan. I don't know if he'll be coming or not, but we'll see. Nine states, 23 players ranked in their respective classes at last check. I know some of that has fluctuated, but that is still, that is summit level basketball for mm -hmm. anything. So if I'm a fan, what do I need to do to get myself there? Because I think that's going to be the biggest question after this podcast. Hey, it's right in my backyard. I need to take yeah. advantage. What's the easiest way to do so? Am I going to be able to get tickets? Yeah, you can still get tickets. Um, season ticket holders uh, that are Blue Devil season ticket holders on Friday night, their ticket will get them into all four games. Um, if you aren't a season ticket holder, you can get them at the door or you can go on our website for the shootout and there's a link there. Um, and at q and I think they are buying at the door. On Saturday, you can get them at the door. Uh, there will be lower level seats available. Season ticket holders had the chance to get theirs first and those that didn't, those are, seats are available. Um, you can get them at the door or again, you can go to our website, which is quincyshootout.com. Um, and there's links on that main page there uh, that will give them information about how to get a, a ticket ahead of time. If you want, and the tickets are, you know, it's a $15 ticket on Saturday to sit in the lower section. And you're going to get eight games for $15. If you're Can't coming beat just, that deal. No, if you're coming to watch one game, it's expensive. Yeah. But come and watch three or four, and you're going to get your money's worth. You're going to see, you're going to see future players that are going to be playing in the NBA right. and big-time colleges. And, and that's been neat. We're finally starting to see some of our kids – play that have been drafted and are in the NBA and that's kind of cool and I admonish you if you are coming check out that web website in advance because you can really target the games and the players you want to see and again I would say go see Link Academy at all costs because those are some of the kids that I think that you're going to be talking about for years and years to come Eric thank you so much for doing this for the community it's an awesome thing and KHQA is proud to be partnered along with the Quincy Shootout yep. uh, Eric asked us a couple of years ago to come on board and I can't remember something I've enjoyed more uh, and missed more last year not getting to do it. I, I don't know that anybody was more depressed than this guy and Andy Douglas that it didn't happen last year, but a whole bunch of us were pretty darn depressed. And again, Eric Stratman, thanks for joining us. Again, we're here on the Doerisms Podcast, and we'll be right back here next week to talk about the Quincy Shootout and the upcoming Superfan Shootout as well. It's a great time for basketball right here in the Tri-States.